My name is Anas and Bitsing goes and Sonsen. It's not 100% correct. My name is Anna Sensen. Here is Hans Christian Wiesinghus. And uh, we are um, just a few seconds away from having a HS Pranoy on the Bamson Experience. Our first Indian guest. It's, uh, it's going to be great. We will do this episode uh, on a Zoom call. So, uh, so yeah, we're just uh, waiting for Pranoy to, to join in. I, I feel like he's been playing great like forever. He's a phenomenal player, but especially the last like 12 months, he's been uh, on a good run. He's been uh, in great shape and uh, recently got married. So um, yeah, it's, it's going to be awesome to to pick his brain about uh, how life is going and uh, badminton in general. So guys, I don't know if I get to do it uh, or while the podcast is uh, is on, I think we will go straight at it when Panoi joins the, the call. So I just want to say welcome back to another episode of the Bamton Experience. Um, episode number 36, I'm quite sure. And um, thanks for the comments, the feedback we got on the last episode. And uh, yeah, here we are again to, to deliver for you guys. We feel like we are the... The only two here in, in the sport trying to to push it in the right direction and uh, solve the, the issues that's going on and uh, giving you guys some knowledge about different players and, and all the circumstances that we as a player faces. So uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel. It means a lot for us if you want us to continue doing uh, doing God's work. And uh, Prana is on the line. Joining, joining them. Cool. So stay tuned for this episode, guys. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment, let us know who you want to see uh, as a guest on the Bamson Experience in the future, and um, let's uh, let's get into the episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, half past seven for him, almost a quarter to eight. Boy, so it's probably. I think they eat a bit later in India, right? So it's probably before dinner for him. I don't know. We can ask him. Yeah. The first question should be: Have you or haven't you had eat, dinner? Had dinner. Uh, and if you had dinner, what did you have? <laughs> yeah, I think we should talk a bit about the Indian food. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, the fact that it seems like everywhere we go, if you go to the Indian restaurant that's near our hotel or mm -hmm. just the, the city where we play the tournament, you can a hundred percent expect to meet some of the Indian players. Yeah. They are. Always at the uh, eating, eating uh, like the Indian, uh, Indian food. They like the local <laughs> Indian food, that's for sure. That's our first topic. Yeah, that will be our first topic. And now, Kranoi Ajas is joining us. I will put this one. Um, <clears throat> we need him to start the video. Yeah, now we can hear him. And there he hey. is. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. All for those. Hey, my man, how are you? Sub, what's up? I'm good. How are you guys? Great as well. Can you hear guys in a week's time, anyways? But yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were just discussing that you already have dinner or haven't you had dinner yet? Uh, no, we have late dinners, right? Uh, you guys have around seven ish, but yeah, we have it around eight, eight thirty. Okay, so after even. it's like seven, seven forty five for you or something like that? Yeah, seven forty, yeah, seven forty, seven forty now. Yeah. So just so how just is so it, how's it going? It's going great. Okay. It's going great. Just so you know, uh, Pranoy, we are we have already started the recording. Just uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> just so just so you know that. <laughs> uh, but it's going great. It's uh, it's fine. It's uh, it's just the four p.m. here in in Copenhagen. Hans Christian yeah. finished training. I had a, a day off. So uh, how about you? Well, I just finished training. I just came back uh, an hour back. Uh, that's when I texted uh, Hans. Uh, what's What's happening with the link? <laughs> but then yeah, it's it's going good. Yeah, I've been pretty running around with the marriage stuff, and then uh, yeah, getting few sessions of practice now at least before Denmark and French. Yeah, yeah, you've been quite busy with your wedding, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, in uh, Indian weddings are pretty long. Uh, mm. yeah, you have a lot of events uh, as such from the boys' side, then from the girls' side, and then. Uh, you have to impress, uh, like you have to impress your in-laws, and uh, then you have to go to their place. And 
and a lot of stuff. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of work. Like when I got married, it was like one weekend and that's actually a lot. And then my God, yeah, I took yeah. one weekend out and that's it. And that, that's fine. It was a great weekend, yeah. but uh, it didn't have to be any longer than that for sure. Yeah, I tried. I tried my max to train until uh, my wedding. Yeah, from but I think from the wedding day, then I think for the next thirteen days it was just madness. So yeah, <laughs> just like di- different uh, gatherings and parties every single day, or different or- gatherings, parties. Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, uh, here, I think um, the families are very much involved in Indian uh, culture and. We have to impress everyone out there uh, in the family side, and then it goes to the both the sides, from the girl side, from the boy side, uh, and then uh, you know it takes a lot of time. <laughs> it's but, never but how, how, how does it work as a guest? Do you go to the uh, the like during the whole two weeks, or are you just there for one party and then that's it? Or um, so so I had one. Uh, so generally we have marriage and then the reception. So at least my marriage was a court marriage. So luckily that was, I mean, that that went uh, or that finished in probably uh, one hour time. But okay. uh, then we have the reception where you call all the, all the people out there. And that's some 1,900 people, somewhere around 800 to 900 people comes into the guest <laughs> list. And <laughs> so you can imagine the wow. time you have to spend just standing on the stage and greeting people and uh, crazy. Yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think the entire baddie batch came uh, from Hyderabad and from all other places to Trivandrum. Like that's, that's, that's my hometown. I stay in yeah. Kerala, which is like the Southern part of India. And so everybody flew for my reception and that was, I mean, it was nice. It was fun. Um, and then I had to go to her place. Uh, that's yeah. her side. And then okay. uh, their reception is a little different. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so, the, the, so the, like guest, the guest does not join like different receptions. Like you won't have the same guest going twice to anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Generally okay. you don't have to, we'll have different people coming from her yeah. side to her reception. It could be all okay. her, her close relatives and yeah. So yeah, that's, that, that's what I was cuts. wondering because uh, as a guest, if you had to go to like two weeks of party every single time, <laughs> yeah. one of your close ones got married, it would be like a whole year around. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. But just fun. like who's paying for this, Prana? Is it is it you or the, the dad of the bride? It's or what's the my tradition? pocket, it's my phone, it's all my it <laughs> <laughs> wow. I hope you got some good gifts then. I, I I wish I had some sponsors for this book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, congratulations! Uh, thank you, thank you. Being married. Yeah. Um, where yeah. where are you now? Are you in uh, in Hyderabad? I'm in Hyderabad. Yeah, and I'm back to training center, and yeah, uh, we had we had uh, national games. I mean, we had a uh, we had an event called National Games in between. So I went straight from marriage to playing a team event because. It was uh, kind of compulsory for us to participate. So mm-hmm. just finish that. And then, yeah, the last few days I've been in training. And uh, yeah, it's all good. Hopefully, we'll see you guys next week. Yeah, Hopefully. we will. Yeah. We will. Yeah. So Hy- Hy- yeah. Hyderabad, is, Hyderabad is where the, uh, like your national training center, the Kopichan Academy, is that what it's, what it's called? Yeah, uh, so we have Gopichand Academy in Hyderabad, and uh, that's where me, Shrikant, Sai, Samir, uh, we all train. Uh, and then uh, we have the Prakash Padukone Academy, which is in Bangalore, which is where Laksh and uh, the other batch, I think Kiran, uh, Mithun, and all these guys play. So these are the two centers where uh, it is officially the national training centers also. Um, mm-hmm. uh, which has been allotted as the national training centers where all the facilities for the national training centers would be given. I mean, food, accommodation and all those things. So, uh, so the players can choose wherever they want to go, if it is in Hyderabad or Bangalore. And so, but I think a lot of them are training in Hyderabad because the doubles main center is in Hyderabad. So the entire doubles batch uh, trains uh, in Hyderabad. And uh, I think in Bangalore, uh, it's mainly singles and uh, uh, um, so yeah so the number of players in bangalore would be slightly lesser uh, compared to the hyderabad so we have a national uh, uh, camp which which happens we have a list of players uh, probably a 30 or 40 odd players who, in, who would be in that list okay. that keeps changing 
according to your performance and a uh, few of the juniors would be included in that um, mm. and that that runs around the whole year um, we we'll yeah. have few gaps a few few breaks in between couple of months here and there but but i think most of the time it just happens throughout the year yeah so then leading up to like world championships or stuff like that you would you would join with laksha and the other guys from parakonas academy as well in a training camp or not really not no? really okay. Uh, okay. they yeah they 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 train completely in in bangalore uh, he okay. trains completely oh, in bangalore yeah. we we yeah. train completely in hyderabad and okay. uh, it's i think we we meet only during tournaments uh, yeah. me okay. laksh yeah we we the entire batch meet laksh and other players from bangalore only in tournaments mm. uh, generally we don't train together Uh, but yeah, for I mean, for Thomas Cup also, he came separately from Bangalore, and we came separately from Hyderabad, and we met in Thailand. Yeah, so, yeah, I remember yeah. we saw a photo of you guys where Lakshya was not on the photo, and Lakshya was missing. Yeah. Like, yeah, hopefully he's not coming. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, he yeah. came from Bangalore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I remember when I played the PBL, and I think it was 2018. Um, yeah, yeah. Bang- Bangalore must have been the the last stop on 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 the road. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that was a that was a great place. If, uh, we stayed at the Ritz Carlton, yeah. which was a uh, nice. Mm-hmm. But I also felt yeah. like the like the air was a bit like fresher than some of the other cities. Is mm. that correct? Or yeah, well, I think uh, yeah, Bangalore is one of the one of those cities which are like um, uh, climate wise, it's kind of always cold. and it's very pleasant and but nowadays it has changed obviously over the last few years uh, it is one of the most toughest cities i would say <laughs> but i think yeah bangalore is one of those places where badminton is very popular uh, a lot of people play badminton and uh, you get a lot of crowd also for matches generally in bangalore uh, okay. compared to other cities uh, so so basically bangalore and hyderabad is the hub for badminton as such in india mm-hmm. where a lot of players have been produced in both this both the states so yeah probably because of that so when did you move to uh, to hyderabad to to practice of uh, hyderabad i shifted in 2008 uh, when i was probably 17 or 18 yeah some some sometime around that that was the first time when i got called to the national training center i remember and and it, and it was very new because i never had done that much of training in my life uh till then and all of a sudden i was in the national training center so yeah so it's been a good uh, 13 years 14 years but I, what did you do before that before that i was uh, i was playing at my hometown i yeah. used to play with my dad yeah i used to play with my dad uh, my dad used to train me so you didn't have like uh, any first, formal training with nothing, the other players nothing or? nothing wow. nothing until you nothing. were 17 uh, 17 yeah around wow, 17 that's yeah. crazy 16 yeah Impressive. so i uh, yeah because in kerala there was not much of uh, badminton which was popular back then yeah. but there was a lot of players actually from kerala who was actually representing india for the doubles uh, mm-hmm. i remember uh, sanev rupesh uh, uh, diju i think all these guys yeah. were actively present in the indian team but there was nobody in singles who could actually oh. uh, who, who like was decent uh, in the in the national circuit So there was no help as such. So I used to play with my dad uh, most of the time. Uh, That's and, interesting. Uh, yeah. Was he a yeah. was he a player himself or? No, I mean uh, he used to play a lot of outdoor badminton. And, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, and uh, he used to be very passionate about the sport. He still he is very passionate. He still coaches uh, for a lot of young kids out there. Okay. But uh, but but yeah, he used to work for uh, the Indian Air Force. uh back in days uh yeah. for the like we have indian air force army and navy so he used to work for the air force and so he couldn't get a chance to play professionally uh, he used to be good but uh, he could never get a chance uh, but he used to play inside the air force mm-hmm. and then um, that's what it is and post so that does, that's where uh, does he started he, uh, to train me and... do do you still uh, talk with your dad after some of your matches and does he still give you advice or <laughs> not really i mean <laughs> not really uh, not 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 much regarding the games um, because uh, uh, we used to get in fight a lot 
a, a lot post post i came to hyderabad and <laughs> so um, because you don't because you are not seeing the matches live and there's there's a lot of restriction when you w- watch matches on the tv and to explain the drift and to say mm-hmm. that one side is faster and one side is slower they don't get it really and yeah. they they and and he still scolds me saying uh, saying saying you can't hit the shuttle from uh, i mean probably you can't hit shuttle outside from one side and i said <laughs> that's how it is i can't explain it to you more <laughs> so yeah but i knew that he still likes to give you advice every now and then right i think it's it's more it's more my mom oh, your mom right i had a lot of discussions <laughs> with my mom where she's trying to uh, teach me stuff and i'm like mom you, yeah. you don't you don't get it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you don't get the complexity of it it's yeah. it's, it's quite a, like simple advice something yeah. like uh, you should just smash it down and stuff and mom yeah. it's, it's not like that people yeah people always say me uh, when i when i when i go back from saying that you just need to smash whenever it comes to base yeah. and i said uh, the other guys can pick it up too right yeah. they're like no no you just have to smash and, uh, yeah. I said how do I explain all these things to you guys? Yeah, it's too complicated. I would say yeah. when when I, when I played the PBL that was really one of the the advices that I got from my coaches all the time you just need to use that smash. I'm like okay fair enough you know so <laughs> Yeah. Now so um we we wanted obviously to to talk about the Thomas Cup Yeah. Um congratulations even though it hurts yeah, thank you yeah. <laughs> yeah still still hurts still hurts. Me when it... <laughs> yeah. i saw i just i just saw that uh, video you did for what's it that col- collaboration with whatsapp yeah 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 it gave me, it, 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 gave me goosebumps, uh, it gave gave me goosebumps a little bit to be honest yeah they made it really nicely so <laughs> yeah i think they did was really nice from the whatsapp team and uh, but i think it's i think it's um, I think it's big for the sport, uh, big for the sport to have uh, a big brand like WhatsApp noticing it, and uh, uh, I think not just for Indian badminton. I think it's I think it's a big, big, big thing for the world badminton as such, where uh, brands like WhatsApp is noticing something like uh, because uh, the name Thomas Cup doesn't really gets to people, and uh, I'm I'm. I'm totally uh, against that name and where you should keep it as the World Cup or something like a World Championship or something like that because that makes huge difference and yeah, um, yeah people don't understand India, that it is actually a World yeah, Championship. World Championship, yeah. And I think to I think for 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 someone like WhatsApp to just pick it up and uh, to get content like that where they showed how big that event was, I think it was great from their side and and I hope way too many brands come Uh, in the next few years and make stories do, like this so that yeah do you feel any difference uh, in terms of that after you won Thomas Cup that the interest from sponsors and like media yeah. and stuff like that has it, has it grown or has you not uh, haven't you really felt a difference like long term maybe uh, it's tough it's tough to um, it's like it's a, it's a tough sport in our country to uh, get that kind of uh, mileage to be honest mm-hmm. because cricket is something which is very 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 big uh the endorsements are uh, insanely big uh and uh, to 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 match cricket is always tough and uh, to to match that i think we'll have to be some i think you definitely has to be an olympic medalist uh, mm-hmm. and that's where things change in india and i think that's where things change for saina and sindhu because mm-hmm. both of them had big medals had world championship medals olympic medals not just once but twice and and i think olympics is is the time where the whole india i mean kind kind of uh, is like glued attention uh, to the yeah. tv yeah pay attention i think and, and i'm sure it's not just for india i think it's all over the world it's like that mm-hmm. but in india uh, uh, it kind of uh, gets you too much of mileage once you are an olympic medalist and till then it's it's it's, it's a struggle and if you are unless you are a world champion it's a struggle and uh, probably if you are if you are world number 1 maybe maybe you might get something on board but then till then it's struggling to be to beat cricket uh, as a sport and uh, yeah. i think uh, thomas cup actually made it made it 
a slight difference i would say a slight difference that i said yeah. something like whatsapp to come uh, i mm-hmm. i think i didn't expect that to come so i hope a lot of brands comes uh, for the, this sport and i think it's i think it's mainly on how you market the sport and mm-hmm. probably we are lacking somewhere on those lines when i talked to some of the uh, i guess it was some of the coaches some of the staff members uh, from the indian team after they won thomas yeah. cup you guys won thomas cup they said that they really hope that this could be like a, a push in the right direction in terms of getting yeah. badminton more popular in india and maybe yeah, yeah. maybe i mean maybe not uh, reach uh, the level of cricket but maybe get close to it but do you feel like it, it yeah. hasn't moved uh, at all in that direction or just a tiny bit uh... Uh, probably a tiny bit i would say probably a 5% push has definitely come um, uh, and i think um, a lot of brands have actually picked it up and a lot of media attention was actually given to be honest but it was as i would say it was very short lived mm-hmm. um, it was not pushed beyond a certain parameter and uh, it could have i mean we we, we could have made it much bigger mm-hmm. in the sense saying that we are the world champions but then uh, as you know this is a very slow process and yeah. unless and until you win it two three times or, uh, or one of you guys maybe this, win win like the individual world championships or something like that individual world yeah. championships yeah. yeah then then there might be a big difference uh, as such but as i said um, the last five years there's been a big difference in badminton and uh, uh, there's been a lot of push from a lot of sectors and um but still we are way behind cricket i mean just way yeah, behind yeah, yeah, i mean yeah. i mean the number of engagement people i mean we can we can get it from the number of engagement people uh, um, get from the live badminton happening on a mm-hmm. on an ott site uh, with a cricket match with a normal cricket match not even a world cup that is just probably 20x more i mean the viewership yeah, is just yeah. 20x 30x more yeah. okay. um, that is huge Yeah. so to get that kind of a thing i don't know how we are going to do but uh we have we we certainly yeah. have a big gap to fill yeah i don't think there's ever been a live cricket match on danish tv no i don't think so <laughs> no chance it's, yeah it's crazy it's crazy <laughs> is is cricket like is it it's not only in india right it's in other countries as well yeah, yeah i think england is big england, australia yeah. is big new zealand right. is big yeah okay. i think especially england is big yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah have you played it did you play cricket when yeah, you yeah we all play we all play okay. yeah we all play and i used to i also used to be a bowler yeah batsman okay. and the bowler right so i used yeah. to be a bowler i used to love bowling and i thought of going to cricket for a while but then uh, somehow shifted the gears because dad was playing uh, badminton a lot so that's where i shifted the gears but the craze was i mean the craze is still i mean probably 10 years down the line cricket was just insanely popular we had few players who was big big names and it was insanely popular but nowadays if you still compare uh, that much of madness is not there uh, probably a decade back it was literally madness and i never used to miss a cricket match uh, okay. on tv so uh, so you can imagine the madness of uh, yeah. that sport i think But that's how they marketed it yeah. who's the best cricket player in the indian badminton team <laughs> Indian badminton team. Uh, I think Srikanth plays really well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Is he a bowler really or a batsman? Batsman. Yeah. Batsman. Yeah. Okay. He is a batsman. Yeah. He plays really well. I think. I think uh, all of them plays really. Uh, I mean, a decent level because everybody has played cricket yeah. when they were young. Uh, yeah. If I mean I'm, that I'm kind sure, of sport, I'm sure it's, a, it's enough for like national team level in Denmark. I'm sure. <laughs> right. Easy. Easily. <laughs> we, we, we can. We can easily play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um i've actually seen the the, the danish uh, cricket team practice and and they are okay. all like if india know, descent or in yeah. india oh, uh, heritage of some sort i feel like oh, yeah. Okay. yeah actually my neighbor uh, he lives just across me on my street it's an indian family okay. uh, and the, oh. the dad there he plays in a cricket club just nearby uh, okay. and they okay. only have people of indian or pakistani descent in the, in the club yeah. mm-hmm. that's that's all there's no uh, like uh, yeah white danish people that the place yeah, in the club yeah, only yeah. indians or pakistanis yeah. So. Yeah, yeah yeah but i think in england i think in england it's very popular it's very very popular in england obviously because there's a lot of indians and 
Pakistanis, especially in Birmingham, you must have seen a lot of Indian crowds coming for matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there it is very popular, and in England it is very popular. At the time, one England one thing, uh, sorry, friends, one thing, one thing that we we missed to talk about in the beginning, uh, we 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 sat here discussing if you had dinner or, or not by this time, and I said that um, I feel like every single time we are out somewhere in the world uh, at at the tournaments. If you go to the Indian restaurant, you can always expect to meet some of you Ooh. guys at at the restaurant every time. <laughs> <laughs> but but you don't get to see me, right? You must have never okay. seen me, I guess, on Indian restaurants because 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 I don't go to eat Indian uh, I mean Indian food whenever I'm traveling. Um, I What always try the local cuisine. I I mean, if you're if, if you're traveling in Tokyo, then then i go and eat all the japanese stuff sushi and all those things and in indonesia because i generally don't like the indian taste whenever it whenever whenever we are traveling because the taste is completely different hmm. but there are few players in the team who just can't live without indian so <laughs> yeah. you can you can i think you can always see them inside the restaurants yeah. <laughs> and there's 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 indian restaurants all over the world yeah. all over the world Everywhere right. you will get it everywhere. Yeah. I think in I think in Denmark also, audience also. I think you have one yeah. just down yeah. the street. I yeah. think a lot of them go there for yeah. dinner and stuff. Yeah. One thing, one thing that's crazy about Indian food in Denmark is I feel like in India you could get like a butter chicken with rice and garlic naan. You could get that yeah. for like ten, ten, ten dollars or something. Ten dollars, yeah. yeah. In yeah. Denmark, is is like uh, five times fifty dollars. Yeah, fifty dollars. Yeah, exactly. Fifty, insane, insane. It's absolutely yeah. insane. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. Insane. yeah. yeah. Uh, I remember thing, in Tokyo also. Hmm. In Tokyo also, it was somewhere around six x or seven x the money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For uh, what you actually need in India, yeah. it's insanely expensive. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not completely yeah. finished uh, asking you about Summer's Cup because that's one thing we oh, yeah, we, we, totally uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. we we got sidetracked a little bit and we talked way too much about cricket. Uh, <laughs> this is the badminton experience, not the cricket experience. But yeah. <laughs> w- one thing I really want to know from that Summer's Cup, Prana, and you have to be honest, like hmm. how injured were you actually in that angle against Gemke? Like it looked yeah, bad so, when it happened, and I was like, yeah, "Maybe yeah. he cannot continue. Maybe he can. I don't know." But yeah, you played pretty it well. It was bad. The last two. Yeah, okay. It was bad. Uh, the first game was bad, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then towards the first game, I figured out what all movements were hurting, and then uh, and obviously during that uh, break, we took a tablet uh, during that time, and there was a painkiller. But it took a good 15 minutes to kick in. Mm. And uh, but the pain was there whenever I was jumping on my forehand side, and whenever I was lunging on my forehand side. And the problem was, I knew back of my mind saying that okay, the painkiller is on, but I don't know the extent of the injury, and I didn't mm. want to make it worse. Also, um, but the third game was very tactical. I mean, the way I started of the third game and. Uh, this, the way I finished of the second game was very tactical because uh, I knew Gmk was going to push on the third uh, from the better side, so I had to be very calculative to be honest. And the first ten points I knew was the crucial ones, and uh, there was pain, but I knew okay, painkiller has kicked in, so just go, just go it for the first six points, and then then see how it happens, uh, yeah. uh, or then decide uh, what happened because. After eleven, I knew the. Ne- I mean, the better side was very easy to play. I think. I think you guys remember the the good side was easy to play, and um, so I was like, somehow get the lead to eleven eight, eleven seven. That's good. That's 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 good, and uh, I think that worked. I mean, the first five six points he was not ready. Mm. Uh, he was thinking I would be playing a little slow, and uh, but I think I kind of uh, started off with a little uh, firepower and. Probably didn't expect that come. So yeah, that was a little bit tactical, but it was a little in between where I was a little bit confused how bad the injury was and um, yeah. How did I you mean, the next the day, day it was fully swollen. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, it was fully swollen up. Yeah, it was fully swollen up wow. that night, and and then we had one day break, uh, so we tried as much as we could to get it all right, and it was okay. I mean, it, it was not bad. But for the finals, I was praying it doesn't come to my match because I was, mm. I was not in in the shape uh, yeah. to play a, a a good good game. But yeah, luckily it didn't come. So <laughs> yeah, the guys did the job in the final. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you What did you feel like? Um, because it's the first time that India uh, has won the Thomas Cup. What did you feel like really clicked for you guys this time? Uh, I think I think um, it was uh, the mix of the players. Definitely the mix of the players who were who who were in the team. Uh, because we had only two seniors in the team, me and Srikant. Uh, rest all of them were very very young, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three. So. Uh, when there are a lot of seniors in the team, then there is a lot of issues. Uh, it's, mm. I mean, it's generally how it is. And when it comes to team unity, it's like that. And, uh, so I think it was only we, we both as a seniors and uh, and uh, we all were in a decent shape too, which which never happens. I mean, for, for the team events to work, um, I feel everybody needs to be in a decent shape at the right time. And I think, and, and for us, the lineup was perfect. Um, Lux playing first, Srikant playing second, and me playing the third one, which which I felt if it could have gone anywhere if the if the lineup was different. And I think I mean it just comes like that when 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 it's when when it's written uh, somewhere that that you're going to win it. I mean all these things comes in place. And uh, I remember I mean when when you guys also won. I mean just just the right mix of players at the right time and the form also matters at that right time and I mean the doubles also needs to click I remember in 2016 when you guys played a lot of scratch pairs playing playing but all of them went on to beat good good pairs out there and I think something like that worked and definitely the men doubles was the most crucial for us I would say Chirak Sapik uh, without those guys, I don't think it was. Uh, I mean, we could, we could, we could never believe that we can win a Thomas Cup without having a very, very strong first doubles out there. And I think they made it really easier for the rest of the men singles and the second doubles to actually even have a belief that okay, if we lose the first singles also, we still have the tie in our hands. So that yeah, was very takes important. Off, it takes yeah. off a lot of pressure for sure. Pressure, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think uh, me and Hans Christian, when we, we did an episode prior to the Thomas Cup, we talked about some of the teams that was the favorites. And dark we horses. Make, we, we, we we dark horses. Not from you guys, but I think from Beckman, I guess. You were the dark horses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't even mention you no, guys. We, we, didn't even, we didn't even mention <laughs> India. And we also got a lot of like uh, critique or hate from, yeah. from some of the Indian people that we did not mention India. But I will say, yeah. though, right after the episode, I think I texted you and yeah. said, India actually have, have a very strong team. <laughs> <laughs> so we already uh, uh, we already there said yeah we, yeah we probably should have mentioned you guys. Sorry, to, it came uh, back to bite us in the end. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I'm, I mean, it's good in a one way for us because uh, nobody nobody kept us uh, mm. uh, in that place, and uh, I think for us it was actually a win-win situation because nobody had any expectations. And we just had to go and uh, play, play, play the best badminton. So if we had a lot of expectations coming from you guys, also saying, okay, these guys are uh, a very good team, then uh, I think you guys would have also prepared in a much different way, uh, but have made it much tougher for us actually in the semi-final. So yeah, I think it's a, it's, it's a good thing for us also. I think always keep that expectation, saying that uh, India is not a great team. So next year also. We might have a chance. <laughs> yeah. so how cold is Denmark? Is it cold or is it really cold? Or? Yeah, it's like was it was it like 10, 15, 15, no? No, 15? today it's 15, 16 degrees. So that's okay. for that's okay. standards, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. 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 For for you and I, Pano, it's it's way too cold. It's way too cold. <laughs> for me, it's way too cold. I I'm hate like cold. A, I'm like a Viking, so I, I love cold actually. I prefer it over yeah. heat, but it's also because I sweat like a like a bastard. Mm. So uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. How do you like it? How do you like Denmark and French Open at, at this time of the year? Um, basically, I'm not a big fan of uh, winter season. Um, so it's, I mean, uh, Denmark uh, is, is, I mean, I've never played well in Denmark, to be honest. <laughs> I think I've played only one quarter. <laughs> yeah, I've played only one quarters. Uh, but I think French, I've always loved playing. I don't know why the atmosphere is always electric in French. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of people coming in. And, I mean, obviously, Denmark is... Um, I'm sure there's a lot of players from Denmark. So, obviously, the crowd is going to come in. But I always wonder why, why, why there is a lot of people coming in for French Open, where the badminton is not so popular and... 
you have football and you have all other sports which are insanely popular out there but still from the first day you have the french open which is packed and so i love playing in french to be honest so it's it's a nice place to play and uh, yeah, there's no doubt the atmosphere is a lot better at french open yeah. compared to them ago yeah. no doubt about that yeah, yeah, uh, we yeah. actually we are moving to a new arena this time in the mac open so still the same city oh yeah Yeah, it's oh, a bigger yeah. arena this time, so hopefully that means I can play better and you can play better. As well. Hopefully I can play better then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully, yeah. I have, I have, I have the totally the same uh, thoughts about French. No, but, I love, I love French as well. It's, uh, it's so good. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's so good. I don't know. I've, I've, I've always wondered, but I'm still not fi- able to figure out. To the answer for it because why why people come in so much for a badminton match? They they just <laughs> yeah, have they, I think they just have a different way of 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 being you know spectators for sports for sport events maybe yeah they are very yeah. good at that yeah. I mean they do that yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and stuff all the time <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah 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 it's quite fun <laughs> it's fun no it's, it's fun playing yeah. we we wanted to talk to you about um because I think it's fair to say that you have had quite uh, an, an impressive comeback here in in, in in the last like 12 uh, 12 months and prior to that you you were dealing with some illness yeah, um yeah. can can you can you tell us more about that or um uh, yeah so i was uh, struggling with a couple of things um uh, first i had in 2018 i think i remember during the world championship time 2018 in uh, china uh that's when i first uh, felt a little sick where uh, i was not able to breathe properly and um whatever i was eating it was coming until my throat and i could feel the food is not going down whenever i was eating any kind of meal and it was very very tough to deal or uh, i was i was not able to figure out what it was and i went to all sorts of doctors here and uh, they gave me a lot of medicines on top of it but it never worked and then later on uh, after uh, six months uh, then i went on to a different team and then they started something called jerd uh, it's like gastro esophagus uh, reflex and uh, i mean something which is very common uh, to a lot of people but for us it's kind of little tough when when this kind of happens and uh, kind of completely messes up your breathing and so that took a while that took a good one more than one year for me to actually come back to a normal stage of my gut my gut uh, was in a completely bad shape uh, so i had to um, uh, be in consultation with someone from us for a pretty long time and then uh, then things got started getting better and it's like it's not something which where you eat one tablet and then you get better so uh, it took a lot of tests and uh, it got okay. better and then then it came the covid came i mean mm-hmm. uh post 2019 i think i think the 2019 season was okay health wise but i was playing very very bad and uh, i was not crossing the first rounds of any tournament and then the covid came and uh post covid in between i got covid uh and that's where i had one rib pain which started during the covid that just before the thailand open i remember in 2021 uh that rib pain never vanished and i still have the rib pain uh so um, when okay. you take the scans when you take the scans there is nothing which is major the small kind of a thing but then uh, it's been slowly better through food and other breathing sessions and all those things which i've been trying to do uh, it's it's at least under control in the last uh, um, 8 to 10 months to be honest um, so yeah so, so probably when those things started to kind of uh, get settled i think i started playing slightly better and uh, i think the last six months i've been uh, slightly better in the consistency level uh, lesser first rounds i would say uh, mm. but yeah uh, it's been it's been better uh, than playing first rounds so, yeah. so what what was um, how how did you cope with the with with the time where coronavirus was canceling all our te- all our tournaments were you just uh, focusing on something specific just to get uh, healthy again or did you do something in your training or <laughs> yeah so i think i completely changed um changed um, the lines of the training uh, especially the off court training uh, the strength and the condition i think i started to work with someone who had worked a couple of years back but i've never worked i had never 
I mean, I could never work uh, for a longer period of time with that particular person, and not just a person, but I wanted a team who is well connected in all all lines. Uh, the the nutrition, the the breathing sessions, and uh, uh, the strength and condition. All of them knows uh, uh, what's happening, and that kind of started off last September, where uh, everyone was from one place, and so all the things were coordinated for me, and it became very easy for me and. uh but in covid time nothing big happened obviously because a lot of tournaments cancelled and i was still figuring out what to do and i think everybody was in the same mm. uh spot but i think last year is when i thought i just need to step up and uh find something which needs to be done for the body and if the body is fine i think i, I can still play uh at a decent level so my only focus was to work on the body and see what can be done and i think a lot of things changed uh, post that and <clears throat> would yeah. you say that um and we also have a few questions about this this win in particular the one where you defeated victor uh, on bali uh, last uh, that must have been december um did yeah. you feel like yeah. that was like the start of um like a new plan or just uh, gaining more confidence or or what did you feel like that was the time Yeah, I think beating Victor always gives you confidence, and I think uh, you guys would also feel the same. Where someone who is playing that consistent uh, at the international level and winning almost all the tournaments um, back to back, and uh, I think he's he's I think he's someone who has given a lot of inspiration. I would say, to be honest, uh, who has been extremely disciplined and uh, been able to do things uh, on a very very consistent manner. So. I think uh, to beat someone like him, uh, especially on the comebacks, uh, gave I mean gives gives a lot of confidence uh, to anybody. And and yes, that that gave that that start to be honest in Bali. And then I figured out okay, if I am able to play at this level, um, I just need to be consistent enough, and I uh, just need to consistently play this kind of a game on every day. And uh, for that, it was very really easily. Um, I think the answer was to just take care of the body. Uh, don't get into injuries and uh, <clears throat> lose time. Um, so it's better not to hit hundred percent on the training every day rather than just hit seventy, eighty, and uh, just be consistent on the training day. So I think that's what I changed. Where I used to be pushing hundred percent on the training, and some niggles used to come, and then that used to take a lot of time to heal. So now I think it's. Better to be on that fifty, sixty range rather than uh, I think playing every day is more important than than taking a break after a while. So yeah, it makes good yeah. sense. Yeah, I think that yeah, like, yeah. Con- consistency at that level it is probably like the hardest thing to ach- uh, thing to achieve, right? Like you have also yeah. proven on so many occasions that like your top level is yeah. pretty impressive. Like you've beaten all the big guys in that yeah, yeah, and yeah. so on. But like yeah, that yeah. consistency that consistency. You Victor has. It, It's just, yeah. it's very difficult Something, to figure out exactly. It's very difficult. To that level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need that code, which 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 will eventually you'll know, yeah. but it takes years to get that code. Yeah. <laughs> and once you and once you get that code, also, I mean, it's not necessary that you will keep hitting that. And one injury comes, and then again, you are trying to find those answers. And uh, I'm sure Anders also had a big injury layoff, and now he's trying to figure out. um uh, that previous game how uh, to to get to the top 5 and uh, sometimes it takes a longer period of time sometimes you just get it in one tournament and uh, it's i mean it's like i mean it's very tricky i mean badminton is a very tricky sport <laughs> to be honest yeah. I and mean, it's yeah, not like a football so many so many players uh, maybe so, yeah, so we can yeah. there's another I good think, example actually i think i think the only exception would be lee chong we were have always seen him In the same tempo, same speed, same defense. And you you always wonder these guys never get injured or. Hmm. Uh, yeah, he was he was <laughs> just a different kind something, of person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something. And you uh, beat him as well, right? From some two times I beat him. I could beat him two, two times. times. Two times I could beat him. Yeah, we have, lucky, we have... lucky enough to beat two times. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question. Um, we have a question about you being you being called the giant killer, um, mm. because as, as as Hans Christian just mentioned, you've beaten all the best guys uh, in the world. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Lin Dan, Cheng Long, Li Chongwei, Victor, yeah. uh, 
Hans Christian, yeah. me as well, twice. And okay. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I think I think I think I think a very good record against Sanders. I have two zero record <laughs> because I because I think after 2019 we have never played. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, the last yeah. time was in uh, in Hong Kong, right? Hong Kong, Kong. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Hong Kong. Yeah. Was it was it 19? I remember. 21, 19, 21, 19, in the third. 21, 19, oh. in the third. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But I still have the two nil record, so I'm glad. <laughs> um, but but what what do you think uh, makes you able to beat like the guys that really no one felt like they had the chance to beat? Uh, I think probably the attitude uh, is one uh, main thing which I feel has uh, I've been able to beat this top list. I think the first thing which I learned was I think in twenty. 20- 14 I played against Lindan for the first time uh, in Malaysia Open I remember and uh, I remember giving a lot of respect because that was the first time I could play someone who was so big and I used to you know uh, uh, idolize all these guys on TV and all of a sudden when you get to play I think you eventually give a lot of respect and then you lose I mean you you actually forget playing um you just give that respect and then uh, you are okay losing to them and uh, but then i realized you are not going to beat these guys if you are giving a lot of respect yes you need to give respect to what they have done uh, in the entire career but uh, once you are on court i think you are just one more uh, opponent for you and i think that's where probably in 2015 that switch came for me and um, in french open against linda and i just wanted to win and um that's where things started to roll for me to beat these bigger i mean big names and uh, i think the intent changed the attitude changed uh, it was just one more match for me and uh, the the respect levels during that game kind of i i started to shut it down and uh, yes post match pre matches i think the the big players you always need to respect but during the match i think you just need to go for the killer instinct so probably that made things easier uh, if i had not had that shift then i don't think i would have ever beaten any of these teams yeah makes uh, makes good sense i've uh, i definitely went through that uh, i mean that learning process as well mm. remember mm. the first yeah, time yeah. i fa- faced uh, victor i also <laughs> got my ass kicked in all england um but i was saying in general in general i was very like not disrespectful but not respectful when i faced you guys in training and uh, in tournaments <laughs> he was a real but i mean as pana you said that's what you need to do if you want to be the absolute best so yeah uh, yeah yeah you, you need, need to, to throw away that respect yeah you can you can you can listen to people saying okay you're arrogant and i think at the end of the day people just tell you okay you beat a particular player or not i think that's what matters and uh, sometimes yes sometimes we'll have to be arrogant i think that's i think that's the, i think that's the only answer sometimes your body reacts to that uh, for some players and uh, you just need to know what works best for you and uh, try to win from those sides yeah. mm. yeah. so what's uh, so so what now pano you have beaten all these uh all these great great players but uh i feel like a, a, a player with your with your level um which i believe is is extremely high I've, i've always had a lot of respect for your game um i feel you need to win some tournaments now yeah what yeah, do you yeah. what do you think about but, that <laughs> yeah yeah but i'm not really worried because uh i always believe that uh, i mean some players have been able to excel at the world level very quickly and had good results and Uh, but i'm i i feel i'm always lucky enough to be playing at this level and uh, still playing at this level i think i need to be um uh, uh, what do you say very happy with what things have uh, or i'd say what god has given me in this in this badminton career so yes definitely playing a finals would be i mean or probably winning something because always there in the head and, but i feel uh, it might come and you never know uh, i am i'm kind of a person who gets things very slowly uh, i mean not just badminton but in personal life also things happen very slowly for me so i'm i'm very patient in those lines sometimes it might happen probably the next tournament or sometimes you just have to wait for a year uh, but yeah hopefully sometime soon and uh, i think just a learning process and i'm still okay if i don't win anything big 
uh, i think that's how life it is you don't get everything you want to and you already want yeah. some stuff as well so you want some <laughs> every every bit you want some everything and you also you're yeah, yeah because you you only 30 so yeah. for me that's still young you have plenty of yeah. snow age sweet 30s yeah <laughs> i went uh, i went i went through your results uh just the last 12 months and you you definitely did win a lot of matches so you set yourself up for these um yeah, yeah. For these situations where suddenly you might end up in in a semi final or final and then you never know um yeah you never know and uh, like like say something like thomas cup we never thought what it would happen or we just wanted to have a medal out there somehow somehow get to the semi finals was the target and, but then eventually went on to win that um, gold so um, things will happen i think and i i do believe in that uh, concept and uh, just have to wait maybe 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 french open you never know <laughs> you never know you never know maybe but yeah bad draws in french open, open right? <laughs> yeah but yeah bad draws in french open right i think a lot of teammates are playing against each other in french open yeah oh yeah that's right yeah who yeah. are you playing against i think i have my friend darren liu i think it's the seventh time i've darren liu <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know that you know that that draw system do, doesn't work at all. It just the doesn't work at all. No, no. this is the same every time. I don't I don't understand that draw system. I think they yeah. each names, but I'm glad yeah. that my name doesn't come uh, near the Texas in every first tournament. So uh, I'm thank Christy. Okay. Both time I go for the championship. Yeah, sure. yeah, I'm still okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy. Bad luck. It, it just. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Yeah. I mean it's it's fun when you see when you see a draw and you're like ah god damn that's a tough draw. But what if yeah. the opponent is thinking the exact same? The same. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I mean you'll have yeah. to you have to turn it around so. Yeah. So uh Panoy we we don't have much more on the program. We just want to say thank you so much for for joining. Thank you so much guys. Your program is very interesting to be honest. Uh, Thank you very I try much, to watch though. as much as possible here. Yeah. It's it's a lot of insights uh, on world badminton, and yeah, I think uh, you guys are doing very well. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Thank you very much. You taking to see you guys here. Yeah. To see you guys next week and in, We will. in Denmark. Yeah. In, yeah. In, yeah. In, in 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 the north, the cold, cold north. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully my visa comes on time so uh, yeah, so that I can travel. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Schengen visas uh, I mean in India there's a lot of issues happening with Schengen visas so we're still trying. Uh, hopefully it should be done so yeah. Those persons of India. Well we'll we'll pray pray you get it done and see you in uh, yeah, Denmark. Yeah, hopefully you pray for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see you thanks for <laughs> thanks for joining. See you see you see you guys. Yeah. See you. Bye-bye. Bye bye. So guys, that was uh, this episode of the Bandsman Experience with uh, HS Pranoy. Um, great episode. Yeah, I great think guy. he was uh, yeah. really open and uh, gave some great answers. So uh, I thought it was really interesting. So hopefully you guys will as well. I really thought it was interesting. Yeah. I, I I love this conversation. I guess we could go on for for much longer time, but uh, we needed to respect uh, that it's um, it's 9 p.m. out in India. So uh, he needed some dinner. Yeah, I think that's that's yeah. fair. So guys, we hope that you enjoyed it as much as we did. Um if you did, please subscribe to the channel, like uh, like the video. Now I'm, I'm looking at myself yeah, again. I'm, not sure. I'm, trying I'm looking to at myself out. instead of looking over here. Okay, I'll take the rest over here. Yeah. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video and uh comment as well. <laughs> That's it guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.